Boom. What is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to our 24th devotional here on the YouTube channel. Once again, as it is every week, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you all for the support, the love, the care, the encouragement, the prayer requests, everything you guys do for me and my life and for this YouTube channel. It means the world, and I appreciate each and every single one of you that tune in every week, that are faithful to hearing the Word of God study, that are eager to dive into His Word more, and just really tap into this aspect of our YouTube channel. And so I thank you for that, and I appreciate you for your support and for your consistency um, each and every single week. And this week, um, for this devotional, I have a new burden. I have a fresh burden, a fresh thought, um, something that the Lord is really kind of brought to my attention, reminded me of, convicted me over, um, just done a work in my life. And I believe for many of us, not just including myself, because every week these devotionals, I feel like I'm speaking to myself, not all, all not literally, just literally, because I'm talking to the phone, but also just in retrospect that oftentimes with these devotionals, yes, the burdens that I have and the things that I have on my heart are things that I need to hear and things that I'm going through in life. And this devotional this week is no different, and so I trust that for some of you, maybe you're in the same boat as well, um, that whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're in a pretty deep valley and you're in a pretty dark storm right now, I pray that this is an encouragement to all people that are watching this and a conviction, a challenge, a fresh reminder, whatever it might be for you, I pray that the Lord does something in your heart with this devotional this evening. And so we're going to be in three passages per usual. We're going to land in one, though, and kind of be the anchoring spot. But as you can see from the title of this week's devotional, we kind of have a unique, unique title, unique burden being He is Immutable. And for some of us, if we've grown up in Christian households and in church our entire life, we've probably heard that word before or at least heard it defined and maybe not had the word tied to it. But it's a very relevant and very common every single day characteristic of Christ that is oftentimes present everywhere we go. Um, but we don't talk about it enough. And so before I get into these three passages of scripture, I just simply went to the most reliable source I could possibly find, that being google.com. And I typed in immutable definition because I knew it, I knew what it went, meant, but I wanted to see what Google said that it meant and see if that lined up and kind of broke it down in more of a simple way. And so according to Google, um, the most reliable source, obviously, I think we have access to today as people in 2023, immutable defined by Google is unchanging over time or unable to be changed. And I think this is true. This is a good rock solid definition of being an, and a reminder that if you're referring to something being, being immutable or it's immutability, that thing, that person, that aspect of your life, it won't change, it can't change, and there's no possible way for any other circumstance or season or time to change that person, that place, that thing, that circumstance because it's immutable. It is unchangeable. You can't change it. It's the exact same every single day. And so we got three passages of scripture, all fairly short, sweet, and to the point. But if you have a copy of God's word handy, I encourage you to start turning to the book of Psalms, my personal favorite book in the word of God. We're going to be in uh, chapter 102, verse 27. It says, but thou art the same and thy years shall have no end. If you flip over just, just a few chapters over, or a few chapters, a few books of the Bible over, rather, um, you can turn to one of the, I believe, one of the greatest chapters in the entire Word of God, being Isaiah chapter 40. So rich, 31 verses. I encourage you to read all of it once this devotional is over. But Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 8, it says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And then finally, we're going over to the New Testament book of Hebrews, the very last chapter, chapter number 13, verse number eight. This is going to kind of be where we land, where we throw the anchor out, and we just kind of wade in the waters for the rest of this devotional. Verse number eight of chapter 13 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And so I think this burden 
or at least this 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 thought process, um, kind of what the Lord's really broken me over, is just this simple reality that I believe for not just myself, but for many believers in the world today, um, no matter how old you are, or where you're at in life, I think we could all agree that the things of this world oftentimes let us down and they change and they differ. Um, I oftentimes, you know, we can look to people, we can look to jobs, we can look to career paths, we can look to schools, we can look to communities, we can look to sports teams. That's a very practical example for a lot of people. Um, we can just look to basically anything. Eat, I mean, anything you want to insert in that thought line of thought there is not immutable. It changes. It differs. Whether that be based on circumstances, whether it be based on seasons or time of year or age or, you know, feelings, emotions, anything, whatever you want to insert there, ability, talent, skill set, whatever you want to, you know, I could go on and on. You can insert whatever word or ever characteristic that comes to your mind first and that might be relevant to you. But many things in our world today is not immutable and they let us down. They fail us. They forsake us. They change over time. But I think going back to this characteristic of God and he has many, many characteristics across this entire, entire word of God that we have. But the character and the person of God, one of the keystone characteristics and one of the main aspects of him um, is that he's immutable. And oftentimes believers, we talk about omnip omnipotence or omnipresence or maybe his righteousness, his justice, his love, um, his eternality, anything like that. We talk about these characteristics of Christ and of God, but oftentimes we miss one of the most important ones I believe that we're given and that we're that God reveals Himself to be, and that is being immutable. Because, like I just said, things in this life will leave us; they'll forsake us, they'll confuse us. Um, you know, they'll do whatever. They will not be realities in our lives from the, until the day we die. People change, circumstances change, jobs change, life paths and plans change, communities change. Sports teams change, everything. They all change and they all let us down and they don't stay the same. And whether that's for better or for worse, that's just a simple reality. Um, I think you could look at immutability or the lack the lack thereof rather as being both being bad originally, but then changing to something better. And oftentimes people do that. They work on their flaws. They work on their failures and their mistakes and they grow and they change. And so they Obviously, it's not always ne necessarily a negative connotation when you think about non-immutability or unimmutability. I don't think that's a word, but for the sake of today, it is. But on the other side, it also is people could be, go from being something great or a sport team from being something great and winning championships and on top to then all of a sudden changing and they're just a shell of their former glory and they're no longer the same excellence. They're no longer the same in whatever aspect or field that they're in. And so people oftentimes can change for better to worse and from worse to better. And that means that they're not immutable. They change. They change over time. They're able to be changed. But if you're a Christian and you've trusted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, Jesus Christ and the God that you serve and the God that you entrusted your entire life with and are, and are living out 110% surrendered to the cause of Christ, that God that you trust in and love so dearly is immutable. And he doesn't change. And even when I sin and when I mess up and when I fall short of his glory and when I start to doubt and when I worry and don't understand or get frustrated or cry out to him in pain and in sadness, even in those moments of vulnerability and weakness, Jesus Christ is immutable. And even when we're living in sin, even when we go the route of a prodigal and wander away in Luke 15, and then come back, just as we're told in the story, the father is still there in his immutability, standing there with his arms wide open to welcome you back home in, in the form of a celebration, in the form of love and longing and desiring to have that personal relationship with you. I think just the, the burden and the thought here is simple, that everything in our life is so temporary and it's so short-lived and it's not eternal, but only the things of Christ are. And that it's so easy, trust me when I say this, I am, this is, I'm coming from personal experience and coming from something that I need to hear right now, but everything in our lives and the things in this world are temporary and they're not eternal 
and they're going to let you down. They're going to leave you. They're going to forsake you. They're going to disappoint you. They're going to change, whether that be from better to worse or worse to better. And that's just a simple fact. And that's the reality of the situation. The only person, the only being, the only thing that we can ever point to in all of human history from the beginning to now to even into the future until the rapture comes is that Jesus Christ and the things of his kingdom are immutable and that that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they cannot change. They're the same. And that even when we change and even when we fall short and even when we let Christ down and we mess up and we do things that aren't you know, righteous and honoring to him and aren't things that please him and make him happy, he still loves us the same. He's still there for us all the same. He still desires an intimate relationship with us all the same because Jesus Christ and God and the things of his kingdom and the things of his reign are immutable. They don't change. And so, you know, if some of us were honest, maybe we'd say, yeah, I've been putting my hope, I've been putting my joy, I've been putting my livelihood, I've been putting my well-being, um, my success, my accolades, my purpose, my identity, my value, as we said last week, I've been putting some of those things on the world, whether that be my favorite sports team, whether that be my job, whether that be my monthly income, whether that be that friendship or relationship I have, whether that be you know, a family member, I don't know what it might be for you, but whatever it is, maybe that's you this evening or this morning or whatever time you're watching this, that you've put your hope in that for so long that you've kind of missed the immutability of Christ and you've kind of overlooked his lack of change. Because obviously as Christians, we would affirm that Jesus Christ is perfect and he's holy and he's just and he's loving and he's righteous, infallible, inherent, divine. We affirm all these things about Christ and so to say that he's immutable means that he's all of those things all the time from the very beginning of time until the very end, until we're all raptured up into heaven. If you're a saved person and have trusted him as the Lord of your life and that divinity and that love and that immutability and that kindness and that salvation and that eternality, it's all still there even when you're not at your best. Jesus Christ loves you the same on your best days as he does on your worst days. He's still there for you on your best days as he is for you on your worst days. And even when you're living in sin, even when you're living in the world and putting your trust and putting your hope and putting your love and your joy in the things of this earth and the things that will ultimately pass away, he's still there for you. So when you mess up, he's still there for you. When you doubt and question and get angry and cry out to God, he's still there for you. When you neglect to read your Bible, he is still there for you. He's still immutable. When you neglect to pray or worship and you're getting so wrapped up in the things of this world that you're blinded by sin, he is still immutable in his character, immutable in his love, immutable in his power, and he still loves you all the same. We as humans, we're broken and we're sinful by nature. And so it's no secret and it's no, it's nothing of offense that I could say. It's no shocker that all of us in this world are not immutable because we're all broken. We're all sinful. We're all lost people. We all deserve an eternity in hell, but Jesus Christ, or rather God, seated on the throne of heaven, sent his son Jesus down in the form of a man, living a life of 33 years, dying a sinner's death, taking our place on that cross, and then dying, and then rising back up into heaven three, year, three days later, taking the keys to death, hell, and the grave with him. And so because of Jesus Christ, his death, and his resurrection, he has that immutability, and we have that hope just to trust in him. And so, yes, we're broken, we're simple people, but we have that hope, we have that love, we have that, that desire, that intimate, warm relationship um, that is waiting for us. If we'll simply not only just trust Christ with it, but kind of take our focus so much off the things of this earth and just put our, fixate our focus on the things above. Because as I've said time and time again throughout this devotional, people are going to let us down, they're going to frustrate us, they're going to fail us, people are going to change, whether it be for better to worse or worse to better. But Jesus Christ and the things of his kingdom do not change. He is immutable. And I don't know about, I can only speak for myself, but if that doesn't do something for you this morning or this evening, I don't know what to tell you because that is one of the most comforting things I think we can hear as believers, no matter if you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, just this sweet reminder that Jesus Christ is immutable. He's the same. He will not change. He loves you so much more than you can imagine. Even when you let yourself down, even when you let others down, other people let you down, your sports team lets you down, your coach lets you down, your professor, your teacher lets you down, your boss lets you down, your car lets you down, whatever it might be, when all of it lets you down and all of it leaves you hanging, you can go back and look to the things of Christ and trust that he's eternal, he's immutable, 
And then his loving kindness and his eternality is, well, eternal. It lasts forever. And so what a beautiful reminder that is um, for us this evening and something I certainly need to take to heart. I trust that some of you have been encouraged by it and challenged by this thought as well. And I pray this we go out this week and as we're getting closer and closer to the end of this year that you would cling to this truth that we find in the word of God and we cling to his immutability. And maybe you just dwell on it. Maybe for the next couple of days or a couple of weeks, maybe you really just dwell on Jesus's immutability in your prayers and in your solitude and in your scripture reading and really see how that changes your mindset and ultimately changes your life for the better. So I'm going to close this out in prayer and then we'll be, we'll be done. Dear Lord, we just want to thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, your mercy. But God, um, for us this evening, we just want to thank you most of all for your immutability and the reality and the truth, God, that you are immutable, that you don't change. You're not changed by time, people, circumstances, seasons, feeling, emotions, whatever it might be. You're not changed, God. You are immutable. And while the things of this earth and while we might let people down and the things of this earth might, might let us down and fail us, God, and while they might change, you don't. And so thank you for that truth. Thank you for that reality this evening, God. And I just pray for everybody under the sound of my voice, whether they be on the mountaintop of life right now or whether they be in the midst of a dark valley, that you would comfort them during this time. You'd help them, God. And you just remind all of us that you are immutable and that we can put our trust in you. We can put our hope in you and that we can have that eternal mindset, God, not getting broken over the things of this world, God, but just focusing on you and the glory that's soon to become to all of us if we've entrusted you as our personal savior. So we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing for us. Help us to be lights for you this week. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's all for me. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you all on Tuesday for a special video. So stay tuned. Love you. God bless.